Thank you for staying with us. You're still on to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now, we're going to be looking at the paper review. Joining us to review these papers is Chris Kende Wandu. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, but he's joining us here in Lagos State. He was in Cote d'Ivoire, um, <laughs> yes, for the AFCON that is currently happening. And if you did not know, Nigeria won their last game. And mm -hmm. so we are now in the quarterfinals. But yes, Mr. Kende has come back without the trophy but he <laughs> might go back when we when we you know get to the finals but yes how did you the... feel uh mr kindy uh mr wandu when you heard that a prophet had prophesied that nigeria was mm. going to be eliminated from the rounds of 16 with a whopping three, three goals zero you know we, they are prophets and they are prophets mm. um and there are so many fake ones um the, the the that man was just trying to catch uh, I, I don't know he, he was just trying to catch crews as we say Nigeria. gain attention and, uh, mm -hmm. yes and seek unnecessary attention and uh, but we knew that it was just don't forget in the past so go to two years now three, go to three years cameroon has never defeated nigeria mm. yeah there used to be our uh, greatest rival just like that but uh, we know that the current uh, uh, egos that we have um, are, are, are war beaters, although they are slow starters, as it were. But just like uh, wine, they were improving with every match. And uh, we look forward to that. We need to see the stadium that day. But we we took our eyes off the so called fake prophet. And you can see what he has said after that, after the defeat, he came out to give another analysis on why they felt that the Cameroon, Cameroonian players is not listening to what he said, this and that. But we know them, they are everywhere. And uh, we are moving on. We are moving on. Our focus is now on uh, Angola. Uh, that mm. we are going to meet. And we, sh and we know that we surely beat Angola. Well. Anytime, okay. anytime the name Angola is, uh, is mentioned, I remember one of my favorite players, Samuel Okwaraji. May his soul rest in peace. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, but are you, are you confident that we might get to the finals and bring home that anything trophy? Can, anything can happen in football. Uh, you know, most people already wrote off a, a country like Cote d'Ivoire, you know, they qualify yes. as the one of the um, uh, uh, best uh, losers. Uh, best losers, as it were. Mm. But yesterday, they needed the defending champion. Yeah. Before that match, the, um, the Senegal was the only team that won all their three matches at Afcon. But uh, football is that match is only mm. two matches in smoking, and then they won it uh, with a, doing the penalty shooter. So anything can happen. But I believe that this current current crop of um, um, super Eagles, uh, I visited their camp and I saw them, I saw their training. Um, have so much confidence and then you can bet. What we shouldn't do is underrating anything. Yeah. Don't underrate anything, no matter how small they are. Look at Kevard, whoever believed that Kevard would qualify for uh, quarter finals. Um, when, when countries like Algeria, Ghana, and Egypt have been eliminated. So anything can win. But we're very optimistic that uh, this Eagles can go all the way to the finals. All right. Okay. Enough of sports <laughs> and football. Papers. Let's go to the papers. Um, we're going to start with the Guardian this morning, and um, there's quite <laughs> there's quite one here that sounds funny. It says Nigeria Ghana. I'm not starting with a major headline here. I'm, since we're talking about African countries, so it says Nigeria Ghana lead West Africa's identity fraud cases. What do you think about that? <sighs> well. Sincerely, uh, the issue of um, uh, identity fraud uh, well, has always been a challenge of the problem. That uh, you know that Ghana and uh, Nigeria practically uh, have the same culture. Uh, they are um, English speaking uh, countries. They are also um, they are also colonized by the British. Um, they are members of the Commonwealth. Um, I don't attend, apart from Gambia, I don't know which other West African country. And speaks English like and do it. Uh, but so the issue of the uh, this uh, identity um, issue has always been a, 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 an issue over the years. Um, but let me bring it to you know the problem we've always had is that we've always said that should be uh, we've always said that there should be a convergence of all this uh, our uh, identity uh, procedures as it were situation where a Nigerian would carry passport. Carry another go for pro safety and do another uh, metrics. You want to do your BVN, you do another. That's in a, a back account. 
your, your ATM, and uh, too many things. We have always said that there should be the need for us to have a convergence of uh, so that we can have that. If you look at this, most of these um, advanced countries, you see an, an average American or just his passport, they have that is what is called a national identity, which is the card, which they normally carry. Mm -hmm. Anywhere that you, see, you, you I'm sure you must have seen that before. Yes. It's just like our number. It's national, that identity, that national identity card is what takes you anywhere you go. In fact, when you hide that you have a green card as an American, is that identity. You don't even have a green card that uh, doesn't have, it doesn't necessarily have, must have an American passport. Yeah. That identity is an identity card that you carry around. And that can be, and I believe that it's the same thing we should be able to do in Nigeria. And the most important, uh, uh, annoying part of it is that, remember that recently, as far back as about a year ago, uh, we have, we, Nigerians we are asked to uh, get a name, a name number. And with that mean that so many things will be traced and be able to reduce the level of insecurity across. That has not worked. You can see on a daily basis, people are being kidnapped. I'm sure we're going to get the shot kidnapping and killing. We are being kidnapped. And our security agencies can still not be able to trace these numbers. And you ask yourself, what is the essence of that main um, problem that we went through uh, yeah. in the bank, that even our bank, uh, the bank account? Banks. There is, people were lining up at uh, main, uh, main offices for hours. Even if, you, even if you have to renew your passport as well, for almost everything. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you have to renew your, even if you want to renew your passport, you have to go through the process all over again. Yes. As if you are getting a, yes. a, a new uh, passport. Mm -hmm. And that to me is an a problem. Because I already have my biometrics. You already have my fingerprints. Why do I need to come to your office again to uh, to do a biometrics of my finger and the rest of them? I go through that process and stay another two, three months just before to, I can get a passport. So there's a lot of problem here and there, which yeah. I think that I'll be able to... These are challenges that... If you go to some countries now, I just came back from video card. If you as you're just leaving the airport, all you need is collect your passport from you and put it on and scan it. I ask you to look straight into a camera. Yeah. Once that camera recognizes you, you are yeah. off. Mm. You are off. The first time I saw that was in Dubai. You mm. just look at the camera, the camera will look at the same, remove your glass, remove your glass, just look into the camera. The camera automatically captures so more, more, more like a face ID thing. That is all. Face yeah. ID. That is good the voir. Go the voir here. A small country, but in Nigeria, then you go through custom, we do this immigration, we do that, and the rest of them, it, 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 it doesn't help us at all. Sometimes I wonder why we're gathering all of this data and we're not even using them. Um, for the former the minister thing. is even doing cra crowdfunding for, for kidnappers, you know, you, you remember, even another story, we're sourcing here. for money to, to pay yeah. ransom. Yeah, talking about kidnappers, another story here says 2,423 people killed. Um, 1,872 people kidnapped, um, kidnapped in eight months under President Tinubu. The figure is far more than that. You know that. That's, that's, I, I believe that that is worse what has been yeah, reported. That, that, you know, in journalism, that's what we call reported cases. Mm. For that reported cases, I'm telling you that over, it is far, far before every one case that is reported, you can, I can tell you that over 30 or 50 were not reported. So we're having more than that. There are so many people in the bushes that were not being reported. There are so many that their parents and their, their, their families are just contacting the kidnappers to their own way. But you know, when they kidnap you, the person they tell you is that do not report to police yes. or else we kill, we kill your brother, we kill your sister, we kill your father. So people get afraid, they don't report to them. So these ones are the ones that are documented. But the ones that are not documented are so many that you'll be so shocked by the number of kidnappings and uh, we thought that this was a, a thing of the past. The government came out with so much promises. We figured that the level of insecurity is overmade when we this, this government at this year, and something needs to be done immediately. Just a few days ago, a, a prominent politician, the, 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 the chairman of PDP in Lagos State was kidnapped along the Lagos in Padre Expressway, although he had been released, but some of his uh, colleagues were died in that process. You go to Abuja, we saw the five or um, six uh, daughter, uh, ladies that were kidnapped, one family, one was killed. Then there have been all sorts of kidnapping. Kidnapping was something that we never heard of in Lagos, mm. apart from the days of, uh, what's that, uh, precious uh, kidnapper? Uh, Evans. Uh, Evans. Evans, yes, Evans. But after he was captured, and uh, it related to, but now in Lagos, it's very, very unsafe. 
to, to move around certain areas in Lagos, we had a Bagada Expressway, Bagada Expressway, mm -hmm. and especially Okota, Okota area, because you know Lagos very well. Those wow. Okota area, a lot of kidnapping is going on, and a lot of uh, 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 ransom is being taken. They're not asking for 500,000, they're not asking for, yeah. asking for 20 million, 13 million. How can an average Nigerian that is finding difficult to feed himself be able to afford? So, our security agencies need to strategize and make sure that they put the boot, their boots on the ground and leave this in for bed. It's getting so serious and uh, nobody feels safe anywhere. In those days, we, some day, months and years back, we look at some states as safe, safe heavens mm -hmm. for Nigerians, where you can comfortably stay and bet no place is safe again. No place is safe. And um, I would that the president, who is currently in France, is uh, on top of this game. He has spoken to his security chief. They said they are going to do something about it. But it seems that it's getting worse by the day. It's interesting to even know that um, most of the papers today, the major headlines are security. about yeah, yeah security. Um, the Punch says kidnapping kidnapping epidemic. Over seventeen thousand Nigerians abducted on the Buhari and Tinubu. And then there's a writer that says Buhari ninety percent, Tinubu ten percent. Obviously, President Tinubu just came into office a few months ago. And then um, he also talks about how abductors killed two AKT monarchs. Also, when you look at the nation, he says security men raise bar in battle against kidnappers um it's sad that this is the story of the day and this is what we keep talking about almost almost every time we're here there's always a security story mm -hmm. and talking about you know kidnapping but i hope that something is being done to curb this and so that we're just we're safe in our own land we're safe in in nigeria because one thing you don't want is not to feel safe in your own home and that's the reason why a lot of people are doing this whole jackpot thing. Everybody's leaving because they tell you, oh, Nigeria is a hot spot and I can't leave there. But we're hoping something is something is being done. Yeah. Yeah, let me quick well, let me just round up round up. Okay. I just came back inside there as well, uh, as you know, and I did, I just came back from the I you be shocked by level of security in Kodeva. I was shocked that I was walking on the street of Kodeva at twelve one AM and most of the houses um there was gates. Mm. We are open yeah. at 12 1 a.m. When we were walking around, um, coming back from the studio, uh, because at the point after the match, we decided to just trek, and uh, it was a long distance. That we would say, Oh, this way we have some level of this. No, they say, No, 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 don't worry, just go walk. No, no, no problem. So many of the houses where their gates, you see, car parked, the gates were open at 12 midnight. No single harassment, nothing. And they say it's not. I say no. Oh, could it be because of the? But they say no. That has always been like that. Not have this kind of issues. Okay. And I was just my mind just rushed back to Nigeria. Nigeria, leave your gate <laughs> open at seven. Seven be your system. Or leave your just, car. Your just that you would not. You would, shall, not shall we really? you would not find your side mirrors. You would not find your <laughs> gearbox. You would not. My you, goodness. You find, okay, that's why they get. They what? just. They just. The brain box. The brain box. That is dangerous. In fact, they jump into your compound, and they, not, not even the one you pack. They mm -hmm. now jump into your compound and now stay the brave boss. It's, it's, it's terrible. I mean, we're laughing so about terrible. this, but it's it's sad. It's, it's like uh, one time when someone was watching television with the family with a generator. And the next thing he heard, I think I've heard this story before. <laughs> the thieves came with the car, put the generator while it was still working, and then just moved. That's when the light was disconnected. They came out. No, they, put them, they put them on top of a car. That the next thing they just boom, man. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, most times we like to concentrate on what is happening in Nigeria on the papers, but um, there's also a security issue um, and a, a diplomatic issue here that we'd like you to address. Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger exit may weaken uh, $277 billion ECOWAS trade. That's according to a report. We've seen that uh, these countries are exiting from ECOWAS and it's reducing the number of the ECOWAS countries and now they're talking about how much of this effect it will have on uh, uh, the trade of ECOWAS. What do you think? Yes, um, in my personal opinion, I think the ECOWAS government leaders um, dropped the ball. They could have engaged these three countries better and uh, more robust and more strategic in order to bring them within the four years. They went out of their way to have um, uh, for the coups to, 
to happen in those three countries, and which is against the ECOWAS protocol. But even at that, when you have a child, you have 12, 15 children, and you see three of them is baby, don't just throw them out of the house. Don't come back to my house. Don't come back to this house. Mm. What you try to do is try to win them back, win their love, try to pet them as it were, um, and be able to get the best out of them. But the ECOWAS government, uh, we are not strategic enough, and they throw away the child with the bad water, and that is what is happening now. The implications are very there, especially for a country like Nigeria, that is surrounded by these three countries. Niger, for instance, is you, when you get to the Niger border, you don't know the difference between Nigeria and Niger. It's just you just walk in, and um, a lot of um, a, a lot of insecurity, um, uh, insurgents coming through that Niger uh, Republic access and and go out, and that is a big problem for us. So we need to be very very careful with what we handle. Yeah. The second one is also the ECOWAS have also thrown this back open um, by make these countries have been embraced by Russia, and you can see that Russian mercenaries are now embedded in these countries, and is a big threat to Nigeria. So if uh, we allow Russia to be able to take a stronghold within these three countries, it's going to be a problem as well. Third one for me is that you know by the ECOWAS protocol, there's true movement of um, goods and services. Um, I traveled to uh, Cote d'Ivoire. I didn't need, don't need a visa to go to Cote d'Ivoire or Ghana or any West African country. But with this now, if you are going to go to Mali and any of these three countries, from what is going to happen, if they say they put on themselves, then you need a, a passport and probably they are citizens. So it's a very, very big problem, which I think that the ECOWAS head of state, being led by our president, should be able to handle this more maturely, more diplomatically, and be able to but the other side to it is that there have been instances in the past where one of the countries also existed that after some years they came back. And uh, I think uh, Mauritania is one good example at one point. They wanted to visit um, the ECOWAS. But uh, after about four or five years, they came back. Um, but there's also been a country, uh, one of the North African countries, I don't know which one, that have been trying to say they want to be members of ECOWAS. But ECOWAS are confused because they think that if they do that then, um, the big influx of goods and services through that route, through Europe into West Africa, and it's going to be a big problem. But I think that this issue can be properly and uh, diplomatically handled. We can engage them, uh, we can engage the countries. Uh, we know that there are some circumstances. Every country has its particular, well, in as much as we are blaming the cool leaders, but also find out that the politicians that were there before they took over, were they doing what they ought to do? Politics is, um, democracy is, is government of the people by the people and what the people. But you see, most of our African countries, the way our leaders uh, behave, they get to office, the next thing they want to do is to change the constitution so that they can run forever. The president wants to be a lifetime president. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to uh, engage, he doesn't don't want to restrict himself to two terms or one term or whatever term that is. That is why I commend somebody like uh, George Opon, we are the president of Liberia, who has just uh, uh, just lost his seat to a rival. You could see the way and manner with which he went about that. When he, he lost, he graciously embraced the new president, gave him all the necessary um, cooperation, and left the stage. That is what it's supposed to be. But in, uh, in Africa, it's never the same. Some will rule for 30, 50 years, and they even want to hand over to their children. Is that democracy? Okay. Well, um, sorry, I was just going to add to what you said. If we look at the Daily Trust, ECOWAS crisis, Nigeria at the receiving end, and the riders or citizens will require visas to travel across exiting oh. countries. Just like you said, terrorists might up their game. So they're saying people might start to stir up troubles, um, and then we will be poorer, says um, Don. So we're hoping that, you know, the negotiations come good for them not to actually exit ECOWAS. But yeah, you were going to say something. Yeah, well, I, I was just, jo just going to uh, another story, uh, still on the punch, uh, not uh, daily trust. Lawmakers accuse uh, Fubara of unlawful conduct. Governor wants pro wiki appointees. The drama in um, River State is not ending. Mm. I don't know episode what we have entered right episode now. Episode <laughs> 523. <laughs> so what's your take? What is happening in River State? No, this is at once in seven. So we are, <laughs> so we are, we are moving on. I, I said something the last time, I think it was on this particular program that I said it, that uh, in as much as a lot of people might just think that, but I guess I know that the guy is it's not, um, maybe not the expectation. So you might be shocked that this guy was playing some kind of game that he wanted to get his uh, mandates from the Supreme Court. Don't forget that <laughs> the federal government at this where 
um, and the ruling party, if they decide to swing it, there's a possibility that they can swing it. It has happened several and several times again. I remember what happened in my state of being. Just somebody that came out in an election was virtually declared the head of the state. And so anything can happen. So he just, I think he just took his time to make sure that his election was solidified uh, by the Supreme Court, which has got it now. But if you listen to him yesterday, he said that uh, he want the so-called uh, commissioners that we are realized of not to give him problem and not to give his government problem. What is he saying? He's saying that for whatever reason, well, if there's anything that happens, there's a possibility that he might just uh, bite. And uh, you know, he has been backing with a bite. So that is one. Secondly, he also realized that us, so he's defying his, uh, his stay. Just yesterday, he has vulnerably um, uh, picked, uh, sworn in, or whatever, appointed the former, the S uh, personal uh, speaker as his chief of staff. The former chief of staff that was appointed by Wiki has been removed. So that uh, uh, personal speaker uh, that had the four speakers, uh, most, four lawmakers with him, have now been appointed the substantial chief of staff. And you know the role of chief of staff. Most people believe that chief of staff is more of the deputy governor of the state. So he might be trying to, he's trying to consolidate that the war is not over. And um, that I know that it's going to be a very, very tough battle between him and members of the legislative and majority of which are realists of the uh, weekend. Uh, let's see how this pans out um, and see um, how this works. But um, he has to assert himself as a governor. He's no longer a puppet. Um, he is the governor of a uh, private state. Wike is no longer the governor. Wike is the minister of the FCT and he should restrict himself to the FCT. There are a lot of things happening in the FCT that should be of concern to the minister. Kidnapping and killing in FCT has never been his part since 1999. I think that one should be made of main concern to him, although he has started blaming uh, politicians and others that want to secure. Um, Volatile uh, government, and uh, but that should be of much concern to him. If anything happens to Abuja, then he'll be held responsible. And while you're talking of insecurity, you come to also know that Abuja is the seat of power. The, most of the all all the embassies are in Abuja, so the safety of life and properties of uh, Nigerians and non-Nigerians living in the FCT is within the purview of the FCT minister as well as the federal government. And if we're not be able to arrest it, they give us very, very terrible signals to the international community who we are trying to, to come and invest in Nigeria. How can any country come or individual or outside come and invest in the country that we have a high level of insecurity? Naira, as of this morning, we had is now 1500 to a dollar. And um, <laughs> power is, is collapsing on a daily basis. There are a lot of problems facing this government, and I hope that um, it's no longer time for talk. It is now time to walk the talk. It's all close to eight months now. This government must keep the ground running because Nigerians are already running out of patience with it. Yeah. All right. Uh, um, so there's another one here on the punch. It says federal government, U.S. signed MOU to train police mm. special squad commands, commanders. Um, so we've heard that the police have said the tracking device shortage is hindering them from probing into cases, especially with this whole um, kidnapping epidemic that's going on in the country. Um, but is this really a good thing? Um, I'm sure it's a good thing, but what is the impact that this would have with the federal government and the U.S. signing an MOU to train the police special squad commanders? It's a good sign. It's a good thing. Um, we need all the necessary assistance we can get, both locally and foreign. Um, but locally, we have to win the confidence of the Nigerians because I say time and time again that the problem we have, part of the problem we have is trust, what I call the trust deficit between the citizens and the security agencies. Nigerians are not willing to volunteer information to the security agencies, believing the fact that when it's done, then it will be traced back to them, then used to hurt them. You've seen in the past few months all sorts of um, um, videos going on, going on on social media involving the Nigerian police. How they have been harassing Nigerians, trying to restore to Nigerians. The latest one, you know, you saw the one that happened in Lagos just a few days ago, where an officer, an ASP, was insisting that somebody must transfer more than thousand or whatever to his account and rest them. And so the police, first and foremost, have to make sure he reaches his force of ridicule elements and undesirable elements who seems to have find themselves into the Nigerian police. They will take it on. They also realize that from some of the security agents 
And um, the security engineers are also getting uh, involved. Mm. And Hello, sir. Now, security agents. Okay, I can. I can. You can see me now. Yes, we can. We can hear you. Yeah, okay. some of the security agencies also go as far, even renting out to their rifles to criminals. There have been few instances where policemen are involved in the so, so, but back to the question you asked. This is a good thing. Whatever assistance we can get from foreign countries in terms of training equipment, mapping yeah. out equipment, tracking equipment that can assist us. In, uh, in making sure that we're able to track these criminals will be of, good, of very big importance to Nigeria. And uh, these are people that have done it and done it all over it. But it's not just having the necessary equipment, having the good job there. But we must also involve, invest so much on intelligence. Most security, um, most security now are needed the board. We should be more proactive, not reactive. It's not when they kidnap people, we now start running around and start looking for this. How do we prevent this? this things from happening. That is what most of other most other countries do. They try to prevent this. There's no country in the world that is uh, free of crime. Let us get that right. There is no country, even the United States. But the fact remains that even if it happens, how often or how quick do you do you apprehend um, those that were involved? And how quick do you also make sure that they are prosecuted? So a lot of things. Why the police are doing that? You to also look at this, the, the, the judiciary. Because if the judge you, you, you pick them up and you can't get, take them to court and they cannot be prosecuted and sentenced, and because the problem, a lot of them because they put them because they know that nothing will happen, nothing will happen to them. That is not the way to go. Uh, but I I, 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 I love the cooperation between the United States, and I hope that other international con uh, countries also help us out in the present problem we are having across the, in Nigeria when it comes to short insecurity. All right. Um even though personally I don't like the picture of the person who, <laughs> who is supposed to be the trainer of our squad commanders, you know, th there's something a picture says. And mm. anyway, it may just be the person we need, but I just don't like the, the look. Um, okay, it should be a fit person that is, that's going to train our squad commanders. You know, you know, there's always that thing where they say um, our police officers, you expect them to be fit. Mm -hmm. and, but then you're seeing people with like bare bellies, you're seeing people that look like they don't well, go this to the, they, the never went, they, they never <laughs> went into their camps where they do their whole rigorous training. Because mm. I remember when I when I went for my um, youth service, mm -hmm. you have to, you know, do whole, all of this drilling and stuff. And that kind of like makes you fit. So when you look at the average policeman, you're like, did you go through any training? <laughs> anyway, so I'm um, still on the point, but moving to the... Um, uh, what do they call it? Daily, Daily trust. trust. Uh, we start with uh, Naira falls to all-time low at official market. Sells at uh, 1,348 Naira per dollar. And in Daily Trust, we have that Naira plunges to 1,500 Naira at the parallel market. So it's getting uh, worse and worse and worse, worse and worse. Uh, and badder and badder. Worse. <laughs> the pressure is getting worse. Sorry, just to add, on The Nation, um, it also says that CBN injects $500 million into Forex markets. So. Mm -hmm. so just talk to us. Naira. Yeah. Yes, uh, the, 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 the Naira is taking the greatest and highest fall since 1960 that we got. And this is highest as ever. I've never seen the history of Nigeria. We are the Naira is going for about 1500 to and uh, I, it breaks my heart. Um, the thing going back, uh, because I continue to compare Nigeria with our neighboring countries, even smaller countries. The, uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, it, uh, uh, it, uh, it is about 600 or 600, between 600 and 660, say, for to a dollar. That is what they exchange as their currency, 660. Now, when you look at Nigeria, that we're having a 1500 to a dollar. You can do the math almost three times. As the Nigerian currency used to be far, far, far higher and that than the safer in the past. Then you say, what is happening? Yes, CBN is injecting 500 million. But you can also, you also understand that we're told some few weeks back that the NPC got about, is it $3 billion from certain source to be able to push the effect of this Naira point? That's what what happened to that money? 
How come that will not have the effect? Um, just last week, uh, the former, uh, the presidential candidate of the PD, I think we have, we have raised that alarm and said the government collected, um, stood up that they were collecting about $3 billion from a certain uh, country to be able to push in the effect. What has happened with that money? Has it been jetted in the system? How we are not having the effect? So, a, a lot of problem going on. But then what I know is that a lot of speculation, speculation is going on, speculation is going on in the economy. Two, some people are, some so called rich people are buying up this dollar, and I'll tell you that for free. They are buying it, keeping it, and weighing it. They are, they are especially using Naira to buy a lot of dollars, going to millions and keeping it. Somebody, an economic expert said that. But more importantly, the fact remains that a consuming nation, and those three will continue to do that. They were not going to have it. We want to continue to start producing, exporting products and services and any more dollars. It's going to be a problem. The refinery, we spend practically, we import practically close to 90% of uh, our, our refined products from abroad. And we pay for it in dollars, which is why some of us are saying that it's good that the refineries are working, that the um, Dangote refineries also start working. So that we have depend less on importation and retain most of this money in Nigeria. Whether that's going to change the price of petroleum is just a simple me. But we we'll have to also look at other critical areas like agriculture, mining, and other critical areas where we can also export uh, export products and earn dollars. But as it is, it is not looking at that. If we don't take our time, in the next um, in the next two three months we may be hitting two thousand dollars naira to a dollar. What that means is that. If you had about 10 million naira in your account as of January last year, that 10 million must have come to, the value must have come to maybe at five, six, five, or even four million now. That is terrible. That is not the way to go. Hmm. 2,000 naira to the dollar, that is quite scary. But it's very close. I don't want to even yes, think about it. 1,005. When no. we were talking that naira will get to 1,000 to a one dollar, yes. we never believed it. And in Remember, a few months. No, no, for nobody ever believed that you get to that. It is 1,005 as of today. How many? Just from May 29th, when this government took over, and now? It was, it was over around 700 when Wari left, I believe. That is 1,500. It's a double, double the price. It's terrible. Okay, so I mean, you've talked about you've talked about you know our crude oil, the fact that we are you know even importing crude. You also talked about agriculture. What other ways can we you know ex export things in order to drop down you know the the, the price of the dollar to the naira? Because um, I know one other way I was even thinking about yesterday was why are we not really doing anything about tourism? Because tourism is a good export for um, countries like Dubai, countries, um, places like Maldives, and all of that. But I know that our security challenges is one mm -hmm. of the major um, factor why we're not having tourists, you know, come into Nigeria. So, what are the ways we can start to um, export tourism? Um, security, like I mentioned, the maintenance of all of these facilities. The other day, I saw a video about the Lekki Conservation Center, of which the Lagos State Government said they had fixed the, the um, what's it called, the long bridge? What, I've forgotten, the walkway. The walkway. Something walk, the yes. Walkway. The canopy walk, right. Um, so they fixed it now, but all of these things, the maintenance, the security challenges, how do we start to you know, put all of that in place to ensure that we can start to have tourism as one of our biggest exports. Yeah, I've answered it. You asked the question, you have practically answered it. I know, but I want language. to get your thoughts on it as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I just, let, let me tell you uh, for free. One of the best tourist in uh, Nigeria is called the Yangari Game Reserve, in Bauchi. Mm. I've been there once. You need to see the Game Reserve. But now nobody goes there. You can't even try to go there because banks now pass will keep it will be kidnapped. You can't find your way there. Then that is that insecurity. Joss used to be one of the best, most people, most US country to Nigeria. When I was growing up, we heard of Joss, 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 and when I went to Joss, I was shocked. Joss used to have one of the best weather in this country. That it is almost the same weather with, with Europe. Most um, foreigners come to Nigeria to stay to go job. In the past few weeks, um, we've seen the number of killings in just 
and Plateau State. That is a tourism center. Mm. That used to be the, you, you saw what Donatu did with uh, across across the state. What's that? What is it again? Tinapa and yeah. Obudu Tinapa. Ranch Obudu Resort. I, I, I think Napa or something. Like that. Tinapa. Tinapa. Yes. Yes, Tinapa. That was supposed to be a world class um, tourism center. And um, um, Cross State started competing with most West African countries, um, countries and even African countries when it came to tourism. Even with when the money, uh, Imoke came in, he bombarded on it and started facing something else. So that is what we had. That is a, that used to be a very low place. I would let me still believe that it, let me still say it is a lovely place. You go to Bar Beach, where we are surrounded, we are surrounded by the coastline. If you go to the beach side in Lagos, oh, it's just like what Lagos is just like Code Bay. Code Bay is surrounded by what? In fact, during my trip, we had a boat ride for about 45 minutes on the uh, on the high sea in, the, in Code Bay. If as we are landing into Code Bay, it is just in water surrounding the airport or the yes, surrounding the airport. Very beautiful place. People go there and relax. People come from outside. So that is those are the kind of things. One of the greatest revenue uh, that Kenya gets from is from tourism. I am sure you have heard about um, yeah. the tourism in Kenya. Yeah. A lot of people go to saf go for safari, what they call safari yes. in Kenya. So we can build on all this. So it's not just about just exporting oil, exporting oil, exporting mm -hmm. oil. There are very very other areas we can look at. Right? If you go to Ife. Wonderful tourism area. Go to Osho, go to your state, go to Kano. So many areas are better. Nobody will come to a country knowing fully well that traveling from even from Abuja to Kaduna that you can be cheap. And you, be, and you see that the advisory um, information news being given by the various embassies on the yen, on the daily basis. Do not come to Nigeria. And if you come to Nigeria, that is 30 of out of 36 states you, you should not visit. Then what is story? What are we going to go about uh, tourism? So, on to be able to handle the issue, that's why we say that everything is hinged on security. Yeah. If we can be able to handle our security as it were, then every other thing we, 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 we rise up. Then we also look at area of power. Yeah. Power. The SMEs have practically died. We are not producing anything. Nobody's producing anything like that. No. Because the cost of diesel, the cost of petroleum is so expensive that even the ordinary barber, the ordinary um, uh, semi-strength, the guy, the guy that does for Kanaiza, most of them, just ask yourself, how much do, were we using to, uh, to pump tire? <laughs> I want to, I want to know, just ask yourself, how much is it for you to pump a single tire? I mean, it's about 500 now. Yeah. It used to be 50 naira in those days. It moved to 100 now. It's, in fact, some are insisting that you must pay 1,000 naira to just pump and patch one tire. That is how bad the situation has become. So, it's, it's a problem. It's a holistic uh, this thing. Yes, tourism is good. Nigeria is not that one of them. South Africa makes so much money from tourism. Yeah. A lot of people go to South Africa. Even Nigeria. Mauritius, is there. just here. Mauritius. You just let me put this. Somebody just went to the, have a party in Grenada that I've never had for in my life. I, I hope <laughs> you had that. Agbabola, Agbabola. You had it. <laughs> Somebody went to Grenada to spend billions of dollars where he packed people to go and celebrate. We have our own Grenada here now, if we properly put it in place. Mm -hmm. That money that was spent in Grenada, if it pumped down into the economy, it will be a long way. In Nepal, I said, but well, you can see that the, the flight, the, the people are just doing what they are like, but it is still brought down to the government, both at the state, local government, and federal level to be able to make sure that this issue of insecurity is done. If we don't do that, then they're not getting the money. Well, I hope that we start to um, take out our focus from oil, from crude um, rather, and start to look at other things like agricultural tourism. In fact, I was asking myself, currently um, the AFCON is happening in Cote d'Ivoire. Can Nigeria host the AFCON anytime soon or even the World Cup? That is, that is a very big thought question. But anyways, this is what we're going to drop it off here on this segment. We'll be reviewing the papers with um, Chris Kende Wandu. Thank you so much, sir, for coming here and giving your valuable contributions as always. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, thank you very much. I stand off with what you just said about ASCO. If you know the number of people that came into Cote d'Ivoire and the money they brought, dollars, it Imagine. was dollars, not not in their local. People were bringing dollars. You see the way people line up at the airport to exchange dollar for the local Imagine. currency. That is building the economy. That's an that's building the well, economy. They are making so much money from that. Nigeria so will get there. So who is going to come here? 
for any this thing. Anyway, have a wonderful day and I'm <laughs> Thank back. You. Thank Go you, Chris. Chris. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. All right, we've been speaking to Chris Kende Wando. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK and he was joining us from here, um, has been joining us here in Lagos State. We'll go on a quick break and when we return we'll be talking about um, the fact that the police has said that they cannot, you know, really probe into matters because of the lack of tracking devices. But yes, just stay with us. We'll be right back.